It's the injury every athlete fears. Associated with a central surgery and a year on the sidelines, a ruptured anterior cruciate ligament has a devastating effect on those who suffer it. With post-operative re-rupture rates as high as one in three, and just half of patients returning to their previous levels within two years, I'm on a mission to discover if there's a better way to recovery. And with the rise of women's sport unequally blighted by ACL injuries, I also want to know how we can prevent this often innocuous injury from occurring so frequently. I think I've found some solutions, but whisper them around surgeons. You might be able to return to the activity you love quicker without going under the knife. And hold on to your tin hats. We're now learning that a ruptured ACL can heal naturally. Join me as I speak to the professionals using groundbreaking research to lead the way in challenging the overdependency on surgery. Plus, hear from a raft of athletes who have already followed this alternative pathway, the non-operative. Okay, so here's a story I'm going to share with you over the coming months as we follow an athlete looking to make the Olympics via the non-operative pathway. Danny Jordan Taft is hoping to make history in leading Jamaica to their first ever appearance in the Rugby Sevens. And even more remarkably, she's also hoping to represent them in netball as well. It would also be her first Olympic appearance at the age of 41. But this dream was thrown into real jeopardy less than 12 months before the games begin. Here's part one of Danny's story. Okay, so, well, I was on tour in San Salvador um, playing rugby sevens for Jamaica. So something I've been working towards for a year and a half now, these, these bigger tournaments this year. Um, I've been, you know, I think I said this to you, I was fitter and faster than I've ever been for many years now because I'd worked so hard on delivering a performance um, at this tournament. Um, and I basically went on, um, I hesitated. I went to go for an intercept. Um, the other player uh, spotted that, who released the ball, and she came at me hard. So I was standing still, bracing myself, holding my leg really strong, and she just came in from the side and kneed me. Um, I went down. I felt the instant pain, and I even said to myself, not again, because I recognized the pain from the first ACL I tore several years ago. Um held on to my knee but um I also am asthmatic so I needed my inhaler more than anything so I was just asking for my inhaler I remember everyone surrounding me once they gave me my inhaler I'd, I'd forgotten about my knee because um I was just in the moment I just needed to breathe so I got straight back up and they were all like hang on slow down let's have a look at your knee you were holding on to it and I was like it's absolutely fine I think deep down I was thinking if uh, exactly the same as my other ACL so I kind of thought it's got to be the ACL but you don't ever want to admit that to yourself and we're mid tournament. Um, we're on the second day of our tour, uh, second day of the tournament. Um, so obviously, I wanted to play the rest of the tournament. Um, so I just got up, and he was like, "Hang on, I need to look at your knee." This was the doctor. Um, so they made me walk first, then they made me bend it, and I had full range. Um, I ran from one end to the pitch. Then they asked me to sprint, so I sprinted, and they were like, "Oh, you're absolutely fine. It's rugby seven, so the games are quick." So the game had finished. So they took me over to the kind of medical tent and they did um what's that test called the, is it the lockman the latch i don't even know yeah. lockman test there we go so he lockman test and he said the good news is he said it feels so strong and obviously in comparison to my other one where there's a lot more movement um you're the you're one you've had surgery on it yeah so yeah it was about 10 years ago um i just landed on it hard, twisted it and ruptured my ACL and also damaged my meniscus, a bucket handle tear. So I had all of that reconstructed and it's always been, I always call it my weaker leg or my not good leg because it's never been as strong as my other leg for all these years. But I've managed to learn how to compensate with my other leg. So this leg that I've now done is my strongest, most dominant leg. I'm left-handed as well. So it's my left leg. And I know for a fact that as soon as I get tired, I overuse my left side. But to me, that doesn't matter as long as I can perform and deliver, whether it be on the netball court or the rugby pitch, 
I don't care if I'm overcompensating on one side over the other. It doesn't matter then. Does in the gym and your PT go, oh, you're squatting to the left or your right leg's not doing enough. Let's do single leg. Um, so yeah, but there's always been a little bit of movement in that knee. So every time they do the Lutman test, it's kind of like, oh, your reconstructed leg's got lots of movement. Um, this one's much stronger and everything's tighter. Um, so they kind of said that to me in the medical tent. They gave me some painkillers just in case. I had some instant bruising all the way down my shin and, and at the front where she actually hit me, where the impact was. Um, and that was it. And then I, I, I strapped it because I just thought if it is anything more, um, I want to strap it and make sure that it, it just stays intact for the rest of the day. And then I went on to play the next game. We went and warmed up um, and I cracked on. No, no feelings of um, instability during your... Absolutely none. No, no, which is why, well, not the rest of the tournament. So the rest of that day, I was fine. Um, yeah, absolutely that. No instability. I didn't even have any pain in it. Just to, to touch it where the bruising was, it was a bit sore. I, you know, like I said, I've played through so many injuries. It, that to me was nothing. So I just strapped it and cracked on and it was fine. I didn't even think about it. Um, but then it was the next morning. So we woke up at seven. Um, we had our first game, I think was midday that day. So I had a lot more time and I'd woken up and I, I had, um, lots of soreness, pain at the back of the leg, um, back of the knee. Um, and I could see it was really swollen. So as every athlete does, I went straight to the ice box, got loads of ice, put it directly on my knee and I aggressively iced it for about three or four hours. Um, and do it cause I couldn't bend it completely either. I, I was losing, um, most, uh, the movement in it because of the swelling. Um, so I just thought, get the swelling out and then I'll be able to move it like I did yesterday. So I got all of this swelling out and I, it went down like it was double the size. So I'd done a really good job. Hmm. I only had what, like... What were you thinking? How was it that stage then? Because you obviously experienced a ACL rupture before, but you've got to the stage where you convince yourself that it can't be that because it just <laughs> doesn't feel the same. Yeah. I think it, I, I, when I say convinced myself, I was hoping, Yeah. I just kept thinking, no, no, last time it was buckling all the time. There was no way I could keep walking on it. It was, it was a lot more fragile last time. Um, but I think, you know, looking back deep down, I knew it was probably more serious. Um, so especially when I woke up the next day and it was that swollen, I thought it's not going to be this swollen unless there's something going on in there. Um, and I had no pain in the meniscus areas. I have no pain in the LCL, the, the MCLs. So I thought, you know, it's got to be the dreaded ACL, but I was in denial. I didn't want to say that out loud because I didn't want to not go, get on the team and play that day. We we had two more days of the tournament. So, yeah, so I just did what I normally do, aggressively ice and prepare to strap it. Um, I got a, a massage gun and was like massaging the back of my hamstring and my calf to release the tension because they'd all tightened up. So I got all the movement back. Um, but then my coach was like, you need to see the doctor. So I went back to the doctor just to talk him through and he looked at me and he said, I'm not going to sign you off to play. He said, you need to get this checked out. He said, it's obviously something more serious. So I, I literally just cried on the spot because I thought that's it. I can't play the rest of this tournament. I've played, you know, the first day of that and it's just not enough for me. I, you know, I've worked a year and a half for this and your whole life comes cracking down in that one sentence. What's so I, that? What's that? Um, it was the CAC, Central America Caribbean Games, um, kind of like a mini Commonwealth game. So it's like a big deal for us in rugby sevens. Yep. Uh, and we meet like some, some good com competition there. So it really helps um, elevate our performance because the Jamaica squad, we don't have very much funding. So we don't get many opportunities to test our abilities against teams until we go straight into competition. Yep. Um, and the other issue we've got is that we all live, we've got five girls that are from, live in Jamaica. We've got, I think, three or four in America. Um, and then there's three or four of us in the UK. That, that, that's in the, the last selected squad. There's a lot more of us, but we're all over the place. So we actually go out a week before the tournament. We train for a week to pull ourselves together and go through our set plays. And then we're, you know, then it's go time. We have to then try and beat these, these teams and we're doing a really good job considering there's no funding. We don't get that extra training. So it's, um, it means the world. And to think that we've gone through that preparation and I was out, um, it was, it was really upsetting. Um, so 
So yeah, so the doctor insisted I when we're on tour, um, your medical's kind of covered. So we went the local hospital had prepared a section of the hospital for athletes only. So we got seen really quickly. Um, so I got taken to the hospital. I saw two of the doctors. They both did the Lapman test. It was great because my Jamaica doctor had tested and said, I don't want to get your hopes up, but I cannot feel any lax in your knee. It feels really strong. I would suggest there's not ligament damage, but there's something going on. When I got to the hospital, they did two other doctors came because they were unsure. And they were like, yeah, it feels really strong. Your ligaments feel intact, but um, let's investigate further. So they did an ultrasound. Um, the ultrasound report showed absolutely a bit of bruising, um, blood in the joint, but they couldn't see it. They basically had put, again, all ligaments intact. I was absolutely thrilled. Mm. Uh, there was still, oh, by this point, I'd started to get like a lump at the top of the knee. And the doctors were saying, oh, it's, it, that's fluid. There's, um, cause I've obviously I've got the swelling down and I'd continued to ice it. Mm. It was like my skin welling up, welting up, I guess, at the, at the top. And, I, and but it wasn't hot. So I kept saying to them, I'm icing it and it's not going down. And she said, oh, well, it's blood and fluid in the joint, which is why I was, was suggesting something damaged in there. Um, and playing. So this is why. Probably after you'd, after you'd damaged it as well. Could not have been great. Yeah. Um, so the ultrasound was all fine. So then she was like, um, we're going to give you some pain relief, but some muscle relaxants. Um, and she said, what we can do is just remove the blood from the joint, which will help with your stability and, and movement, I guess. Um, because I was still walking on it. It was just uncomfortable. It didn't feel normal. So I was like, yeah, let's do that. That was the most painful thing I've ever had done before in my life. <laughs> um, so they just literally stick a, a needle in there and, and draw out the blood. Mm. Um, and how can they do the ultras? scan rather than an yeah. MRI to then have the, the equipment? No, no. We So we did um, do an MRI eventually. So basically, because they did the Lackman test and two doctors' opinions were there as well as my Jamaica home doctor as such, they, um, they were all like, the ligaments are all intact, otherwise we'd be able to feel it a bit more. And they were explaining, like, obviously, yeah. it, when I'm, if I'm sedated and they did the test, that they'd be able to, to pull more. But they can only go, you know, they can only do so much when you're awake and plus you're tensing slightly. She took the fluid out and she said, yeah, it's just blood. She said that blood normally means there's a ligament tear. Mm. So I was like, right. So then they did the, they did Lat Lapman again. And then it was just, um, I literally was about to leave. They were like, um, there's no, you need to wait till you get home. And, and this, you know, it's gone, it, a, a bit of time has gone by and retest. So I went to leave and then she came back over to me and said, listen, we can give you an MRI now if you want. And just to be sure, because that will definitely tell us. So I was like, well, yeah, because the doctor wasn't going to let me play. Um, so we did the MRI. Um, and uh, in that, I don't know if this happens in, well, it doesn't happen in the UK. They literally handed me as the patient the whole report. It was all in Spanish. So I just used Google Translate and translated it. And basically it said full ACL tear. Um, and a slight, well, possible slight tear to the meniscus, but it wasn't clear because of the, the blood in the joint. Hmm. So, yes. So that was a devastating moment. I hadn't even spoken to a doctor and I already had seen the result. So hmm. I cried. You, you were translating that a few times to make sure you'd, uh, oh, God. yeah, yeah, I, the heart just sinks from it. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a crier either, but I sat hmm. there and cried in a really busy waiting hall. Um, everyone's staring at me. I'm wearing my Jamaica kit, so I stand out, you know, all these multicolors. Um, but I just, I it was devastated. I knew what it meant because mm -hmm. of the rehab to go through before. Um, and we're on the Olympic pathway. So for me, it was the end of that dream of ever making the Olympic. Basically, we have an Olympic qualifier in Canada, mm -hmm. which happened last week. Um, if we came first, second or third, First place would qualify for the Olympic, that's an Olympic position, which Canada got. Second and third qualify for a, a position in the Rapid Charge, um, which is another tournament that happens next year in Monaco. And whoever wins that tournament will go, will have that final spot at the Olympics for women's rugby sevens. So we're favourites. The only the only team we have to beat at this next tournament really is Mexico. The others we've beaten several times. I don't want to sound overconfident and jinx us, but we're favorites to go through basically. And we've got a, a really big following across the world. Um, and this is, we've made history in every tournament we've been going to over the last year and a half. So 
yeah, all of us have got the dream of making this Olympic spot. Um, so we knew we had a chance at the last um, last week's Canada Games, which was a RAM tournament. Um, but Canada were the home team and also they're much stronger than us, so they've gone through. Um, but we knew we'd, well, our goal was to make sure we came second or third to get to the repercharge, charge, which, which we're in now. So we've got one more chance now next year. Um, and if we win that tournament, we go to the Olympics. So there's still all to play for, yep. she said. Um, and where, where your head went to was that you're not going to be able to play in the repertoire. Yeah. Or potentially the Olympics. Or the Olympics. Right. Yeah. Um, and I've just, um, I'd only just trialed for the Jamaican netball team in March, just gone. Um, and they put me into the long squad. So I've got opportunities coming up with them as well. I haven't played for them as so well, I haven't gained a cap yet, but I'm now part of their long squad, which means there's a massive opportunity to live another dream there. And obviously my ACL's just gone. So the tears were definitely warranted. Pretty much worse um, timing in terms of your hopes to yeah. from sky high in terms of how optimistic you were about your kind of sporting prospects across two different sports to then suddenly going there's a chance I'm not going to be able to play either of them. Yeah, exactly that. Not to rub it in, so, but just yeah. um, obviously that plays into a lot of your kind of decision making and what goes on in your mind over the next um, few days and weeks. Yeah, it, it's it's been the hardest. It sounds pathetic, I'm sure, to lots of people, but sport is a massive part of my life. So, you know, the decisions I was making over these last few weeks have been humongous. And it's so difficult because you discuss it with sports people and discuss it with doctors and professionals you discuss it with family members and everybody's perspective is so different because they're not in your position they they haven't got this dream and desire to get to the olympics and but all they can do is empathize and kind of consider how you may feel but they're all very logical as well well yeah but you you want your knees for later life you want to be able to walk up the stairs with your grandchildren you know there's all those kind of comments um think about the long term and uh, there's just so many things and it just doesn't make it easy for you to make a decision because you feel like everybody else is against you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that was the moment my whole world came crashing down. Um, obviously, when I saw the doctor after, they just confirmed what I'd already Googled. Mm -hmm. um, and they kind of, they offered me an operation over there, but I, I just said I'd rather, if I'm going to do it, I want to go home because they, they would make me wait a week out there. Then they were willing to operate as long as there was no swelling and blood. Um, and then I would have to stay for recovery. So I said, it just doesn't make sense. I, I should go home if you're allowing me to fly. Um, so that was it. So I messaged my doctor who reconstructed my other knee immediately. I sent all the imagery over, all the prognosis. Um, and he just said, appointment Monday, which was like four days later when I'd returned to the UK. Come and see me. Let's talk it through. Let's see what's happened. And we can get you an operation, I guess, was the first conversation. Yeah. And your mind, I, I presume, was already in that place in terms of operation is yeah. and is inevitable. Yeah. So, the, you know, once I got over the initial upset, I think about 24 hours of nonstop crying, I just thought, right, if I want to come back, my best possible outcome now is to get the operation, as, you know, within a week of getting home. Um and then just rehab aggressively. Um, I mean, last time I came back within six months, which was again unheard of. Oh wow! For an LCA, yeah. It was a yeah. Quick, yeah, yeah. And I and I was so confident. Like I, I signed up and did a triathlon on my sixth month, um, just to get my confidence back. So when I first started playing, I wasn't bothered about my knee at all. Mm. So I thought I can do this. I really can. But then again, you start googling, researching, and doctors are talking to you, and they're saying. We won't sign you, up, sign you off for at least nine months. So I'm sitting here doing the maths. And if I'm off now for nine months, I'm not going to be selected for that repercharge or the Olympics if, if we were to make it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be out on some netball opportunities. It was literally like the operation's going to be the same outcome as if I left it, basically. Um, but yeah, I, I literally in my mind thought, I'm just going to have to do it and hope for a miracle, hope that I can get back in three months. Um, and I did loads of research. I've got a friend who went back to netball within three months, but there's loads of variables. She, 
she didn't get her operation date for three months. So she had three months of intense physio and weight training to strengthen the leg, had the operation, continued her program after the swelling went four days later. And then within three months was back on the netball court and mm. thought if she can do it, I can do it. So I've, that's what I've got to do. I've got to force that. And then you start realizing, well, everybody's different. You know, I don't know if my knee's going to heal as quick as hers. I don't know if I'll train as hard as she did. And for her, it was 10 years ago. So I was trying to get like every detail. How often did you train? What exactly did you do? You know, how did it feel at this point? And what did you do? It, You know, it was, it was probably driving her up the wall. But I thought if I do it the same as her, I can come back in three months. Um, but there isn't much evidence to prove that that was, that was going to be the case. So everything seemed very hopeless. 